Hello YouTube, it's Lion here with Hobbies of a Man once again, and today we are doing another manga review. Now today's manga review is going to be over Villain Saga Book 1. Uh, Omnibus 1, I guess. This is written by Makoto Yukimura, and it's published by Kidansha, as you guys can see right there. Now the demographic for this is seinen, so it's for adults, and uh, the genre are adventure, epic, and historical fiction, I guess. Um... It does have an adaptation and it's available on Amazon Prime. However, it's only in Japanese and you have to watch it subbed. I'm not a big fan of subbed because it, it's so much more effort to read it. Like, if I'm going to read the TV show, I might as well just read the manga instead. Uh, if I'm going to watch uh, anime, I'd rather just have it in English. But, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, no, that's not the right way to enjoy anime or whatever. But, yeah, so... Before we get into this actual review, I do want to complain about something, and it's this horrible gluing job. As you guys can see right there, the glue has come off the edges right here, and this is coming off. Now, I think I know how to fix it. If I just use tacky glue and a brush, I can brush the inside and then just put it under some other manga and let it work. However, I want to complain because it's supposed to be a hardcover. And this is supposed to be a really good addition. And it's not. You know, can you hear that? That annoying, like, stickiness. And uh, I read it like this, man. I don't know how, how this actually leads to the glue here unbinding. I assume it's a heat problem. Uh, you know, I live in Texas, so it's really hot outside. But that sucks. And I do not like that this happened to this. Plus... Weight is a, an, a factor in how, you know, nice something feels. And this is really light. And so it does feel a bit crappy, even though the quality of the paper is pretty good. Okay, now let's actually get into the review. Now, the premise here is that a young warrior by the name of Torfin is seeking revenge for something that happened in his past. It involves the fa his father and his murderer. And we follow the beginning of his story in this volume. Now, the plot line is really good. It's well in executed and in the introduction chapters, which I think are chapters one and two, are really high quality, like, explanations of the type of characters that we're seeing in this novel, or in this manga, sorry. However, the jump backwards in time to, like, the prequel where we see... Thorfinn when he's a young boy and before his dad gets murdered is a bit jarring. I did not enjoy how we were having like a really intense story from the get-go and then we had to jump back and start from like a really like easygoing story and I didn't really get what the point was until you know later on and we realized okay you're seeing him right now and then it's a flashback because he's remembering what happened and then it's going to get caught up and then you're going to be back in the right story. So I understand how and why it was done, but I would have preferred if it was just like not done that way um, because it kind of messed up with the flow of the, of the story. Overall, I think it's really interesting. Uh, after the second chapter, when we're back in the prequel, it's a pretty down to earth story. And it, it's really interesting because it's really human and it, it, it's not like what you would expect from a shonen. Now, this is technically a seinen, but it was a shonen. Uh, it was published in a shonen magazine until it got like dark for a while. And yeah, it's, it's just about a tribe of people living their life when they get called to war and the difficulties that arise from that. And it's really interesting. I really enjoyed it. I think the jarring difference between, you know, the first two chapters and the rest of the story eventually did work for me, but it started out as not working. So I I didn't love the way it happened, but I can say that the story was well managed anyways. Now, the characters here are great. I think they're very interesting. Thorfinn is a good character. He's like... Um... I guess he's kind of like the usual shonen protagonist, but like not. I mean, he's more like Sasuke than Naruto, if that makes sense. If if that's a good in, like 
idea to kind of tell you guys what I'm trying to say. Um, I like his backstory. I like how nice and gentle he was and how like messed up he is now because his dad died. I think that's really human and really, you know, honest. And I really like that. I like Askeladd, which is like the guy that killed his dad because he's the, sh he's the chief of his crew. He's this wild fighter. He's wily and cunning and he's looking for the best fight that he can. And it's really interesting. Like he wants to win no matter what, but he wants opponents that make it difficult for him to win. And that's cool. That's a very like specific way of showing that, you know, overcoming challenges is good. And I like that. I think that's really interesting. If people learned that a lot more, we would be much better off. Uh, and then Thor's, which is Thorfinn's dad, is such a badass. He's so cool. He's so powerful. And it's like wild. And I thought it was really awesome. Um, and then we have Leif Erikson, which is the son of Eric the Red. Which, if you guys have watched Vikings, is the guy that saves Bjorn from uh, King Harold. So yeah, Leif is just like this crazy old dude. And I really like him. I think he's really funny. And I enjoy how he's used to write the exposition of the historical setting of the story. I think that was really well done from uh, Yukimura. Now, the world building here is great. It sets up all the info about the Viking world and the culture that they're going through right now. It's basically like all the Vikings from the motherland or from like Denmark and Scandinavia and stuff have turned Christian. And all the ones that are not Christian are the ones left in Iceland. And they're um, trying to survive and get away from the stuff that's happening in, you know, Scandinavia. But they have to get pulled back for some reason and it just kind of sucks. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. Really well done. I really enjoyed it. It was minimal, but it was really impactful. Um, yeah, it was it was good. Now, the art here is really good. It's it's a sort, sort of cartoonish style, but it's really impactful, and it really works well, and I enjoyed that a lot. I mean, I don't really know the right words to use to describe it. I think cartoonish works, but it kind of gives it a negative connotation. I think it's stylized would be the right word. It's stylized in a way that's supposed to make it look softer than it is, but it adds impact whenever it gets really dark for the story, if that makes sense. Uh, there's no fan service, and I would rate this a 4.5 out of 5. Now, I definitely recommend this. I think this is really good. If you like Vikings, if you like The Last Kingdom, or Vikings the TV show, or Barbarians on Netflix, I think you would enjoy this a lot. It's a really cool story. Now, similar titles, basically all I just said. Barbarians, Vikings, uh, Blade of the Immortal would work. Um, the Last Kingdom, I don't know any other historical manga, but it, it's really good stuff. I guess ba Vagabond, I, I haven't read Vagabond, but I, I think that's one of those uh, historical manga. So if you, if you like that, you will probably like this. And yeah, that's basically it for me. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And uh, yeah, see you guys later.